So the last thing we're gonna take a look at today is the design of a drainage system for a subdivision. And this, this kind of is basically similar to what we just did before in terms of the calculations, but I just wanna show you what it physically would look like when you put it onto a, uh, a subdivision. So this is a project that's currently under construction. It was designed, oh, eight years ago. It's finally going into construction now. Uh, so what we have is, this is a, a piece of property over uh, uh, Mill Road and Granny Road, where those come together. And basically what we did at the time was we took a piece of land that a developer had and we designed it as per the requirements of the town of Brookhaven. And today we're just going to look at it in terms of drainage uh, that's there. Uh, but just some of the background, the rest of the area, you see all this topographic uh, high, the high density topo lines. That's very, very hilly areas. That was all left as non-buildable land and was donated back to the town. So we do have a lot of property here that was, was just not developed. Uh, that's some of the requirements that the town has. But let's take a look at the actual uh, drainage design on this one. So what we have is we have a recharge basin. And this recharge basin has a capacity of 181,500 cubic, 500 cubic feet. That's calculated by taking the entire area that's being developed. So we're looking at an area like this. Just do it quickly around the outside of it. And even a portion of the road, usually about half the road, and all that water times a runoff coefficient of, let's say, 30%, uh, which is required by the town. That would give us uh, an intensity of rain here. We can see our calculations right here. That total area uh, times a runoff coefficient of 0.3 times an eight inch rainfall. We provided, we were required to have 175,789 cubic feet of water stored. When we dug out the basin, or at least in, in uh, CAD, figured out the area that that basin was going to be and the depth and, and the, all the overall uh, parameters of it. Turns out we're providing 181,500 cubic feet. So we're oversizing the basin uh, by just a little bit. Not that that's a bad thing, but when you start looking at changing numbers, if you change a basin by six inches, that could be several thousand cubic feet because the areas are so large. So what we have on this is we have our basin. This is the end section. It is then piped to a manhole. And from that manhole, I'm just going to put a couple dots on here. We have a catch basin and a catch basin. Let me make it a little bit thinner. We also have catch basin, 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 catch basin. And we have catch basins here, here, and there as well. So the catch basins are located, I think we have some also on the street. Uh, it looks like the street we did with man, uh, not manholes, with leaching pools. Okay, so we put these catch basins in places where we typically have low points on the road. So if we do a little bit deeper dive into the way the road's graded, and we'll look at that in a second, we'll look at that road profile, we'll see that these catch basins are located in places where the water is traveling towards. Now, because those distances are greater than 350 feet, we also connected them to manholes. And you can see these manholes are basically, you can think of them as knuckles or joints where we change the direction of the pipe, even just slightly. So it's a series of catch basins and manholes and the pipes are all designed out based on that. So what we'll see is if we look at the, we have to go into the actual profile of it. <clears throat> Here's a test hole data that shows what the soil looked like in there and basically going down as deep as 20 feet. In most of them, we didn't encounter any type of uh, groundwater, so that wasn't a problem. So this is just a blow up of these sections Okay, because that one, one drawing was to scale was much too difficult to uh, 
uh, to fit everything at a, such a small scale. But what we're looking at here is here's our manhole. This is 15 inch diameter pipe. All right, so it gives us the pitch of the pipe. This pipe is 42 feet long, 15 inch HDPE at a pitch of 0.65%. So in terms of doing your calculations, 0.65% divided by 100, that would be 0 0.0065 for your slope. So 15 inch pipes, they would then flow to an 18 inch diameter pipe. We have a manhole. After that, it stays with 18 inches at a certain pitch. 15 inch, 15 inch going into an 18 inch. It continues with 18 inches as we go towards that recharge basin. And at this manhole, we have a 15 inch coming in that way. We have a 15 coming in that way. From this catch basin, we have a 15 inch coming in that way. And we'll look at the, uh, the other side of it. We have 24 inches coming down uh, from the right side. All those together, that total Q, whatever it would be, that flows through this drainage pipe which sized out to be a 30 inch pipe uh, at a slope of 0.63. That keeps our velocity relatively low. Now you'll also notice through here that we have inverts shown on the pipes. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, that's water main invert. So we're looking at uh, head wall invert elevation. We'll look at the inverts a little bit later. Oh, here we go. Catch basin inverts, you know, with so much information that has to go onto a plan sheet, there's a lot of arrows that pull numbers off to the side. So that particular catch basin has a top of curb of 160, a great elevation that would be very similar would be actually your uh, bottom of curb. So that's what your bottom of curb elevation would be. And then we have the invert of 156.75. So that means if the grate is at 159.5 and then the invert is at 156.75, if we look at just kind of a cross section where the ground is, here's the water coming in. Your pipe, the invert of that pipe would be 2.75 feet below the surface of the ground. Okay, at that particular location. Okay, let's get these other pipes. Now we go from the furthest point away and then we'll bring our water back. We have to go to a different sheet for that. Actually, we can do it from here. So we have a 15 inch diameter pipe coming across here. And this is such a small run by calculation absolutely a 12 inch pipe would have worked. You could probably even get away with a 10 inch diameter pipe, but we have that yeah, that unwritten rule of we don't want to go less than uh, 15 inches. We want to keep it around 12. Once we figure out the total amount of water going in this catch basin, we find out that that amount of water is going to require an 18 inch HDPE. So bigger pipe because we have more water flowing through it. We have further more water coming in from the north, 15 inches coming down that way, 15 inches coming from these catch basins. This pipe now sizes up to a 24 inch. So we have an 18 inch on the south, 24 inches on the north. And then by calculation, it turns out we can still get away with a 24 inch uh, going to the west or going to the left on that one. So we also have all of the uh, storm drainage areas because we did a little bit of design with some leaching pools. And I'll show you what we did here. Over on Granny Road, we had to put a series of leaching pools in. And the reason we did that was because we were expanding or, or modifying the road as part of this subdivision, we had to provide drainage on that part of the road. We could not get a pipe to go down the road up and around and make it cost effective. And if we also look at the elevations, it wasn't proper to have the water coming off and coming through on the backside. Uh, so what we decided to do is just put in leaching pools to handle that water and keep it as a separate system. This way, what happens on Granny Road stays on Granny Road. What happens in the development stays in the development. 
So that's some of the, the, the possibilities you have uh, as you're uh, designing these out. So again, this is just another blow up of some of the other sheets, what we see here over in a uh, courtyard. Uh, just let, while we're here, let's just take a look at, at the elevations. We do have elevations on the grates. Okay, the top curve here is 174.4. This rim is 175. Uh, let's see if we have some spot elevations on the curb line. Mm, we don't on this sheet. Okay, that's that's fine. We'll look at those a little bit on a different sheet. Okay, profiles. Here's the good stuff. So we're going to start back here. And this is a perfect example of how the drainage pipes don't have to match up with the road. So in this case, what we're looking at is we have a road profile, and that's going to be the solid line here. That solid line is what the profile of the road looks like. So it's going uphill and then back downhill. And this is back to the back of a court. It was actually Kramer Court we were looking at. But below, what's happening below ground is the water still being pitched down. So even though we're pitching up with the grade, the water's pitching down. So they don't have to match each other. But what's this little thing here? You might remember seeing this when we went over those plan sheets in class. PVIs. Oh, it seems like a, a, a years ago we spoke about those. That's your horizontal curve. I'm sorry, vertical curve that had to be designed. So all that information has got to be in there. PVI station, PVI elevations, A, D, and K, those are site distance calculations. Don't worry about them. Town requires them. They're very easy to do. You'll be able to figure it out once you get into the field. But we didn't need to talk about those in class. The length of curve, 80 feet. Very small curves, okay? But we had to design those. So anyway, what we're looking at here is we have the center line of the road. There's a center line of the road at the percent pitch that we're designing it at. And then we're meeting certain elevations. That water then travels down and through the pipes. And you'll notice that we also don't have the pipe pitched at these very, we don't keep the pipe pitched the same way as the road. We have these drops there. Here we have a large vertical drop. And this way the pipe can maintain a slope that's more reasonable. If we kept the pipe at the same pitch as the road, 4.2%, this water would come racing down and trying to match that and hit that, that, that pipe, it would be coming down at 100 miles an hour and it would honestly do some damage to that, that, that precast concrete structure. So by creating a vertical drop, whatever that, that drop in elevation is, it drops down, splashes, and then travels down through the pipe. So not only do you have to draw this stuff out in plan view, but you also have to create profiles or cross sections longitudinally down the road that give you all this information. And it's exaggerated. Okay, our vertical scale is going to be not is not the same as our horizontal scale. But between these two drawings, the plans and the elevations, you're able to get a lot of information. So the contractor says, okay, I'm going to install drainage manhole number two. When I go to order this precast structure, I can I know what my my inverts are. I can have a invert. I have a certain thickness of base that I need. I have a top slab that I need. And we can create these sheets that show what the actual size and shape of these basins are, send it off to a manufacturer, and they will custom make these catch basins to whatever height we need them to be uh, out there. The windows or the holes that are uh, cast into the, the structures, those are typically oversized. Uh, this way, whether you're putting in a 36 inch or an 18 inch diameter pipe, we can just brick up the inside of it and seal those nice and tight. Now, in this case, we have water coming in this direction because water flows downhill. It's got to follow the slope of that land. So the water is going to go down the road and then even further back down uh, inside the ground. And then that would go off to, uh, there's a manhole junction. So this is going to go to most likely the recharge basin. Here's additional profiles. So water is being captured as it's going. 
And this, I should also mention this dashed line, the dashed line in the background, that was the existing grade before this road went in. So in terms of volume of material that was getting moved around, we have to figure all that out. That's all got to be calculated out. And it's done the exact same way we talked about it in class, existing grades minus proposed grades. And that gives you a cut and fill that has to be uh, passed on to the town so they know how many cubic yards of material are coming off the site. Okay, here's the manhole just before the recharge basin that shows just how much we're dropping down. We have a top invert of 160 and, sorry, a rim elevation of 160. So that is right here is 160. The invert of that head wall is 145.67. So 160 minus 145.67. That means we're dropping down 14.33 feet. So it's a pretty deep excavation to get that in there. All this has to be shown on the plans and designed out so that the contractors uh, know exactly what to build. And also the town has the ability to check your calculations and prove out that it is or isn't correct. So that's kind of what our drainage structures are going to look like uh, in terms of profile views. I'll just show you the last couple sheets. There's 10 sheets on this plan. The last sheets are basically landscaping plans. Very important to the town that all the landscaping be shown on there. So we have all the trees that are required around the recharge basin, um, even around the lots where we're going to be putting trees in. Okay, whatever these TAs and FAs and QP types of trees. There's a key somewhere on this plan for landscaping. Uh, but as part of your design, as a site designer, you also tend to become a landscape designer as well. Uh, basically, the way we figured this out is when we get into the zoning portion of this, which is one of the next topics we're going to cover, we talk about landscape requirements. And the town does have a requirement that street trees are required every 30 feet on a road. So I just went and offset every 30 feet down the road, put a tree in, and I forget how we actually picked the types of trees. I think we just, I think we just picked them out of a book. I don't think there's any really rhyme or, I like maple trees, so I know there's a bunch of maple trees in here, um, but it's that simple. It's that simple to calculate it. These are standard details from the town, pulled right out of their, uh, their uh, details. Here's our health department details for the septic systems. Here's some of the details for curbing. Okay, that's all Town of Brookhaven standards, cut and paste. Here's the trees. <clears throat> what do we use? Basswood, pin oak, white ash, pitch pine, cedar, and white pine. No maples. Hmm. That's interesting. Usually I put maples on a lot of these designs, but oh well. I guess that didn't happen here. Uh, anything else to show you on this? I think that pretty much gives you all the key stuff you need to know about in terms of drainage. This was a really interesting project where um, I could tell you more about it, but I don't want it on videotape. Interesting job to be involved with. All right. Have a good day. Uh, please take a look at the homework assignment that will be posted up by this afternoon.